What is going on, beautiful people? I hope you are having a fantastic day. Welcome back to another episode of the Thrive Forever Fit Show. As always, I'm grateful for you. I'm pumped that you're here. And the fact that you spend your time listening to me rant and rave is unbelievably amazing to me. And I, I couldn't be more grateful for it. Before we jump into the cast, I want to get the apologies out of the way. For those of you guys that are not watching via my YouTube channel, then this is going to have zero relevancy for you. My cheeks are a little red and rosy, which is kind of a perfect coincidence. So I just did a volcanic mud mask. That's neither here nor there. You got to take care of your skin. Secondarily, I'm wearing one of my brand new tank tops, no sponsorship yet. So good life clothing. If you're listening, get your boy sponsored. This is my new Ash Rose tank top. Summer's here, man. You got to get yourself in the right kind of gear and my cheeks and my tank are kind of matching. So if you're watching on YouTube, you get to uh, enjoy both. So if you're not, my bad, go over there, check out the channel. You should be subscribed to both. I put a lot of content on the YouTube channel that I don't put out in the podcast. And so it's definitely worth a, a watch, definitely worth a subscribe over there. Just go to Thrive Forever Fit on YouTube. You can respond to check out um, all of the content, all the rants and the raves and the videos. Secondarily, this podcast is sponsored by a brand new product that I have just released to the market. It's called Elite Collagen. If you're not taking a collagen product, then you just don't care about your healthy skin, your healthy hair, your healthy nails, your joints, your cardiovascular health, just your overall body wellness. Collagen is an amazing product that is going to help with everything. And listen, I mean, you're exposed to a lot of elements. Why not internally fortify your system with a beautiful collagen? But here's the situation. Some of you guys are know, hey, bud, I'm already taking a collagen. Appreciate you. Got you. I got bad news. The problem is this. Most collagen powders are just that. They're powdered collagens, and they're made from bovine, which is cows, or porcine, which is pig's skin. Have you ever seen a cow skin or a pig skin? Some of them are plant derived. We won't even get into those. The collagen, it's not even really a collagen product. It's a, a makeup of stuff that tries to become collagen. But if you're taking a collagen powder, one of those big hefty collagen, gross, chalky, whatever it is, just know that it's coming from skin of cows and pigs. And of course they wash them. But if you've ever been in a pig farm or a cow farm, not the most savory of things. My collagen is a marine-based collagen. And here's the big thing. Forget all the other shit I've already said. Here's the differentiation between mine and the one you're already taking. Mine is half a tablespoon every day. It's a delicious chocolate mint flavor. And here's, here's the big stuff. Here's the, here's the real deal. Here's what nobody's telling you. The powdered collagens get broken down inside of the gastrointestinal stomach, inside of the stomach. That's not where collagen gets absorbed. Collagen actually gets absorbed and has a higher efficacious benefit if it's absorbed in the small intestine. Well, see, mine passes through the stomach based on a beautiful collection of, of polymers and a collection of these peptides. If you heard that, that's just Rudy taking a sneeze. He likes to be introduced in some of these podcasts and I didn't give him a proper shout out. But my collagen actually passes through the stomach and gets digested inside of the small intestine, which is where all the magic happens. Your powder product's not even making it there. So you're getting very minimal, if any, efficacious um, effects from drinking that chalky, gross tasting powder product. So if you're interested, just go to thriveforeverfit.com, go to my store, you'll see elite collagen on there. You can pop me a note. I'll give you all the details. It is unbelievably amazing. I've been taking it for a while um, because I've been testing it and, and creating it and everything. Guys, it is revolutionary and it is unbelievable. I can't wait for you to try it. Elite Collagen. Go grab yourself some today. Take care of your skin. All right, let's jump right in. Today, we're going to talk about not giving drama, not giving negativity, not giving chaos a place to live. We're going to throw a no vacancy sign up. You guys have been to those hotels, motels back in the day when you used to go on road trips with your mom and dad. And there was always you drive up and the no vacancy sign would be lit up like a Christmas tree. You're like, oh, shit. Guess we're going to the next Motel 6, right? So that's what we're going to do for drama and nonsense. And, you know, I call drama anything you can put in, in the category. You can shove it all in the same bag. It's negativity. It's 
adversity that you let become overwhelming, it's chaos, it's any and all of those things. So just know when I use the word drama that I'm talking about anything that is unsettling to your, to your equanimity, to your, your mental homeostasis, right? And so we wanna think about this as giving those things a place to live. And if you don't give them a place to live, they can't grow, they can't, they can't anchor, they can't hunker down, they can't cause you the problems. But when you give them the room key, then they start to manifest and grow bigger. They start inviting their friends. And the next thing you know, you've got a frat party in room 107, beer cans everywhere, and they're tearing the damn place up. We're going to stop that today. And I'm going to do that by telling you a personal story. So I've had some really unique experiences. And I just thought about this before the cast with broken glass. And so what happened is last, a couple of weekends ago, it was like last Thursday night, but you know, mid morning, whenever it is, woke up to this on Friday morning. Anyway, someone decided it would be a great idea to throw a volleyball size rock through one of the windows at my fitness studio. Now, don't know why, don't know, don't, don't really care. And that's part of the, kind of the moral of the story. They also chunked a rock through the attorney's office, which is just across the alley from me. So I think it was just a random act of, of vandalism, um, you know, a homeless person or somebody strung out or pissed off or whatever it might be, um, just decided to have a little bit of a, you know, of, of a throwing contest and they chose our windows. So I wake up to this um, text message from my sister, Marissa. Most of you guys, if you're local, you know Marissa. And it's a picture of a giant, looks like on my phone, like a, a, a tire size, a car tire size hole through the window at the fitness studio. And my first words were just one word. It was four letters. I'll let you, you know, think of that, what it might have been on your own. And then I said, okay, here we go. So I, I call her and I'm like, hey, bud, what's going on? And she's obviously a little bit frantic. I mean, that's crazy to walk into at like four o'clock in the morning. And so first and foremost, I said, all right, here we go. First question was, are you okay? Yes. All right, cool. Second question, is the person still there? Is there any problems? Do we need to, is, is there, is there a, a critical situation? No, everything's fine. Third question, is the hole all the way through the window? Because I really couldn't tell. And she's like, no, surprisingly, it's just the outer glass that shattered. The inner glass is still intact, which unbeknownst to me, I even, I didn't even know I had double pane glass on those, uh, but I guess most industrial buildings do. So, hey, I got a little bit smarter. So the rock didn't penetrate the inner window. So it was just chaos on the outside, just looked bad, just looked a little bit crazy. So I said, all right, here's the deal. We got clients showing up at any minute. You need to get in there and make sure you give them the best possible experience. They don't even need to know about this. We don't need to talk about this. This is not a big deal. She's like, okay. I said, can you do that? She said, absolutely. So I'm like, all right, I'm going to get dressed. You call the cops. I'm on my way. So I get dressed. I roll over. Cops come, you know, we go through the whole report and blah, 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 and all these crazy things. And, you know, the cop is, is you know, asking me all these kinds of, do you want to press charges and who could do this? And what would, and I'm like, I, you know what? I have no idea. Like, I don't think it's a personal attack. I don't think it's a, a situation that, that needs to be exacerbated. Sure, if you find the person that did it, which you never will, um, do what you need to do, right? Because I mean, everybody, you know, it's, things like this are problematic and we shouldn't be allowing them. But yeah, let's don't get crazy with it. So fast forward, I come back home. For those of you guys, the guys that don't know, Friday mornings, um, Lori and I both take off from our respective jobs and we go on a date walk. We go on like a three to five mile walk every Friday. Then we go to the grocery store, we get coffee. We spend a great day together. So this, this happens, this starts the morning at about 4 a.m. So I roll back in probably about 5.30. And as I come through the garage door, I'm, I guess I'm singing a song. I didn't even realize it. And Lori's at the, you know, at her, at the table and she's working. She looks over and she's like, you sing it? I'm like, yeah. And she's like, you seem to be handling this really, really well. You seem to be very happy. And I'm like, why wouldn't I be? You know what I mean? If you look at the grand scheme of things, like this is not something that is, is valuable enough, you know, from, a, from a, an equanimity standpoint. And we'll touch on that word in a minute. I've used it a couple of times. This is not something that's valuable enough to disrupt my homeostasis. I'm not going to give this adversity, the keys to move in and manifest itself and ruin my day. And so, yeah, I was singing and I'm like, listen, it's not that big of a deal. Well, you know, she's like, are we still going to go on our walk? And I was like, hell yeah, we're going on our walk. Like, I'm not letting this disrupt my morning. I said at eight o'clock, I'll call my insurance. Then I'll find some people that can come out and repair the glass and we'll go from there. So we went on about our business as usual, and it didn't affect me in a negative capacity, but I'm going to tell you why that is. 
I've chosen in my life not to allow drama, negativity, adversities, and these things to be disruptive forces. And I think a lot of times we allow little things. And in the grand scheme, guys, this is a little thing. It's going to cost me about $3,000. And I'll, I'll get to that in a second. After, I'll, I'll go ahead and jump in now. Call my insurance um, at, at 8 o'clock. And she's like, Jay, I don't think your policy is going to cover this. And I'm like, oh, OK. Could I have gotten pissed about that? Sure. But guess what? I didn't know my policy well enough to know whether it covered vandalism of glass or somebody decided to throw a rock. That's my fault. Not anybody else's fault. So I got a little bit smarter. I got a little bit educated. So we're in the process of getting that, you know, particular thing added to the policy just in case it happens again. But I could have gotten mad about that, but I didn't. Everybody that I talked to, including my real estate people, were like, oh my God, who would have done this? This is awful. People are so horrible. And I was like, you know what? It's okay. It's okay. Like, um, it's, what's the value of going down that road? What's the value of getting exacerbated about people being awful or this or that? Or why would somebody do this? It doesn't matter. Like those things don't matter. And oftentimes we major in minor things. We, ma we major in the things that don't really matter. All that mattered was, hey, they didn't get in. They didn't steal anything. We still have secure piece of glass, one sheet left. Nobody got harmed, right? Everybody's safe. Those, that, those are the things that matter, not who did it? Why do they do it? Blah, 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 blah. Like I said, it was a random act of vandalism. It wasn't a, a personal attack on Jay Nixon. So I didn't need to take it as a personal attack on me. But oftentimes we take little things that happen to us in life and we make them so personal, so personal that we just can't get over them. And we want to talk about them and we want to, we want to get wound up and bound up in them. And that's what I mean by we give them a place to live. We give them a place to grow. And what I've decided to do in my life is never to give adversity, because here's what I believe adversity is. I believe adversity is, is simply God and the universe's way of making sure you're not full of shit. And what I mean by that is I preach and teach equanimity. Equanimity means neither too high nor too low. Talking about your emotional state, your emotional stability. And so I, I pride myself and I teach on this about not allowing, not, don't, don't make things bigger than they are, good and or bad. Right. You can celebrate, but don't get too crazy. You can be, damn it, that sucks, but don't get too low. Equanimity is basically like emotional homeostasis. And so I even had one of my clients, when they found out about this, said, did you practice equanimity? And I said, you know what? I did. Absolutely, I did. And so it made me, it made me happy in the situation where I could say, listen, valuable learning lesson here. I got the opportunity to test my equanimity, and I passed. I made it through. And you can, too. You just have to make these decisions on, and some of you guys are asking, well, how? Okay, Jay, this sounds great, but how are you able to train yourself to be that way? How are you able to not get pissed off? How are you able to not ruminate on why and me and blue who and all those types of things? And I think it's because of the reps. It's like everything. You got to put in the reps. And when you get tested, and here's the truth, these tests never stop coming. Six years ago, six years ago, I was working out at 24-hour fitness in Indio. That's a town here in like the Palm Springs area. Normal. I got there at like 3.30 in the morning, um, four o'clock, five o'clock. I came but probably about 4.30. I come out to, to go to my studio to train my clients. It was a Saturday morning. I remember it. I came out and I look over, I get in my car, I look over and I'm like, that seems to be weird. I look over and my passenger side window is shattered, completely destroyed. I had left my gym, my briefcase, my work briefcase in the front seat. And, and sadly enough, all the thief got was um, a protein shake, a branch chain amino acid, a pair of my favorite sweatpants. You son of a, if you're still out there and you're listening to this, I know I want those sweatpants back. They were my favorite. Um, my work bag and then some, some workouts. So all they got was the opportunity to get fit, get healthy. They didn't get anything of value, but they broke my window. And so, you know, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm looking at the clock and I'm like, I got to be at the studio in like in less than an hour. I got people showing up. So I call the cops, you know, as you're supposed to do. Well, first of all, I go in and I talk to the people. I'm like, hey, do you have video, blah, blah, blah. Somebody shattered me. What are they doing? Yes, but it's in the manager's office. We'll call you back. Do you want us to call the cops? I'm like, no, I'll buzz them. I had to go. I get in my car and my routine was this. I'd go work out on Saturday morning, get myself a good pump session. Then there was a Starbucks kind of in the same parking lot. I'd cruise over, go through the drive-thru, get myself a venti, maybe even a Trenta at that time. I don't even know if they still have Trentas anymore. Iced coffee. And I would drive to work, 
jamming out to some country music, get there, train my peeps, be happy as a lark. So I get in my car, I call the cops on the way to Starbucks because I'm going to get my Starbucks. And I say, tell them what happens. They're like, well, you need to wait for us so we can file a report. And I said, no can do, chief. I said, um, I got people waiting on me at the fitness studio that are more important than this window. And he's like, well, then we can't do a proper report. And I said, okay, well, then I just want to let you know what happened. You can go review the tape at 24 Hour Fitness, blah, 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 blah. Hang up, go get my Starbucks, go through the drive through as normal. That day I did take the service road. So they used to have to get on the freeway and going 70 miles an hour with your window um, busted out and glass chips flying everywhere seemed to be a little dangerous. So I took the side road, drank my coffee, got to the studio and guess what I did? I didn't tell one client. I didn't tell one. You can ask any of them that were there that day. I didn't tell one of them. I just went on about my business, trained all my clients, did all my sessions, never said a word because it's, it wasn't important to the grand scheme. What was important was them getting the best possible workout that they could get. After class, after all my classes, I drove to a, I think it was a safe light or whatever those are, got the window fixed and went on about my life. So two times I've been tested with this glass scenario. Luniverse, God, don't know what you're trying to, to do, but I'm going to keep passing, baby, I promise. But enough with the glass. Okay, let's move on. So you get the opportunity, guys. And so what you have to do in those situations is make the decision on what's important here. Is it, is it important that, that somebody broke my window? Well, no, not now. It's already broken. That's the problem. Is it important who did it? No, not really, right? Because like the likelihood of a, of a vandal being caught in this day and age is, is pretty slim to none for breaking a window. Is it important why they did it? No, maybe they were looking for money. Maybe they were looking for whatever it is. Maybe the guy who broke my studio window wanted to get in and ride the assault bike. I don't know, but it wasn't important. So what you have to do is focus on the important things. And the important things in both scenarios were, is everybody that I care about safe, including myself? Answer is yes. Okay, now we've got a job to do and we have to focus on the solution. So the only solutionary thing that needed to be done was call your insurance to see what the protocol is. This was the first time for me. I'd never had my studio window broken. So I called my insurance. I sent a, a video and, and photos and details to my landlord just to cover all my bases. Then I started calling window repair companies to have them come out and, and give me a quote on what it was gonna look like. Those were the only things that mattered. Everything else was part of the problem. And you see, that's what we do as humans is we spend the majority of our time focused on the problem and not the solution. And that's what makes it so challenging for us. This has not been a derailer or a disruptor of my life. In the moment, sure, it seemed that way. And I sent over a four letter explicit because that's just my personality. If you know me, I would say that even if I was in a good mood. But I didn't let it bother me. I said, I said the word and I'm like, okay, let's go into solution mode. And when you go into solution mode, you turn that no vacancy sign on for drama, chaos, negativity, and nonsense. You don't give it a place to manifest. But what normally people would do in, in, in a glass breaking situation, in a car breakdown, in a flat tire, in a, you insert adversity. As you immediately go to why me? And, oh, this is so horrible. And then you let it grow by getting on the phone and talking about it to 27 of your friends or everybody that you come in contact. You're not going to believe what happened to me today. You are not going to believe what happened to me today. This is unbelievable. You know how many people I told that day? My insurance agent, obviously Lori, and the glass people that I talked to on the, on the phone. That's it. We didn't talk to about one of our clients. Some of our clients have been coming in. They still see that the, the glass because there's still some shattered shards and stuff on the ground and they want to talk about it. And we're not even talking about it. We're like, it's not a big deal. Somebody decided to throw a rock at the window. It's not a big deal. And we move on and we make the session about them because that's what's important. The broken glass is not important, right? You can use it metaphorically, use this, this story for whatever the adversity is in your life. It's not important. What's important is a solution. What's important is, is creating a solution that, that makes your life better and ruminating on the problem, the adversity, the chaos, the drama, doesn't make it better. You just give it a place to live. And the next thing you know, you've got that frat party going on that I talked about. And then it's really difficult to get rid of them. You can't, you can't get them to get out. And then when they do move out, the room's been damaged. Like it's, it's torn up. The TV's got a, a boot in it. 
It might be Southern. I don't even know if anybody put a boot through a TV anymore. I don't know why I came up with that. Anyway, but that's the problem. So it's not just you let it move in. Even after it move out, moves out, the damage has been done. And you become programmed to allowing these, these vagrants, I'm not even sure that's the right word, to move in to your, to your hotel, your motel. You give them the room keys. And then this, this thing just this, it perpetuates itself over and over and over and over and over again. And so what I want you to do is get that no vacancy sign fired up. And next time that you get presented with an opportunity in the form of an adversity, I want you to flip that sign on immediately. It's the first thing you need to do. Tell yourself mentally. Whenever it happens, just say, you know what? Shh, flip it up. Do, flip it up with your finger. Do like Go through the motions of it. Make it a trigger. The no vacancy sign is on. I am not going to let this adversity move in and start manifesting itself in a greater fashion. I'm going to simply focus on the solution of what can I do right now and make a list. Lori's beautiful at this. She started making a list. As I, she said, as I was leaving to go to the studio to, to meet the cops, she's like, I'm going to start making a list, babe, of everything we need to do. Call insurance agent. I'm going to look up some glass replacement. This, this is part of having a beautiful partner, man, who gets it, who's the same way you are. And then it's just, it just makes everything so much better. And so if you've got a partner who likes to let these people move in, you got to tell them, say, hey, we're no longer allowing negativity, drama, chaos, and adversity to move in. We've got a no vacancy sign and it's permanently on for those. We're going to refuse service to those types. And so I need you to be with me and I need us to be solution oriented and not problem oriented. And if you can get that, man, you can get a team. Holy shit, you're going to overcome some adversity and life's going to get really beautiful for you. And so what I decided to do is when we we're on our walk, I'm like, listen, this is not ideal. Do I want to have to deal with this? Of course not. Do I want to spend $3,000 out of my pocket? Of course not. But here's what I'm going to do. What, what can I use this for? And so I, I quickly said, this can be a teaching lesson. This can be a valuable lesson for all of my clients on how they can overcome adversity when it's presented to them. And so Jay, now is your opportunity to put your big mouth to use and help people who are going through things that they allow to be bigger than they are. And so that's why we're here today. And that's why we did this little show. So I hope that helps you. And I hope that through practice, right? And it won't always be so simple. Sometimes things are just going to offset you, but understand that equanimity is necessary. And think of that as your, your mental and emotional homeostasis. That's where you want to live because it makes things easier to handle and become solution oriented. We don't need to focus on the problem. The problem is already passed. Ad acknowledge it, address it, and then respond to it. Don't react to it. I'll leave you with this. There's a major difference. People who live in, an, in a state of equanimity respond. People who don't react. And a response isn't, all, isn't always in the verbal sense. You don't always have to respond verbally. You can respond, you can respond emotionally. And that's what I decided to do. I decided to respond from an emotionally stable place and make this not a big deal. Whereas the reaction would have been all those things I talked about. Why me? Woe is me. Boo hoo. $3,000. Unbelievable. This is bullshit. I can't, homeless people are the worst. Who would do this? What? You could go down that rabbit hole and get yourself so stuck. But guess what? It didn't even ruin my moment, much less my minutes, my hours, my days, my weeks. Don't let adversity ruin your life, guys. Use it for what it's worth and get better at living in a solution-oriented environment. All right. I hope this podcast resonates with you. I hope it helps you the next time you're presented with, the, with an opportunity from God and the universe to, to see if you are ready to move to the next level. And, and like I said, these pop quizzes, and they are pop quizzes. You never know when they're going to come. They, they're going to keep coming. But they're just simply little tests to make sure that you're going and growing in the right direction of, of creating a positive, powerful, emotional state of being. And that's what I want for you. Guys, go check out 
the YouTube channel. If you're not subscribed, hit the subscribe button. I'd love you for that. If you're watching on YouTube, go to your favorite podcasting channel so you can listen on your phone, iTunes. I think it's Apple Podcasts now, Google, all the, yeah, I'm on Spotify. I'm on all the channels. Double, get, get, it, get it from everywhere over inundate yourself with some thrive forever fit show and like i said in the youtube channel i'm posting little clips and videos and we do recipes and we do all kind of really cool stuff over there that we don't do on the podcast so it's worth it to be subscribed and monitor both of those and i just want to say again thank you thank you i'm grateful for you i appreciate you i love you and i hope you have an amazing beautiful gorgeous rest of your day all right guys i'll see you soon thanks for listening bye